Today we're going to be talking about wisdom. In the book of Proverbs, wisdom is used throughout the entire book. And he already once has talked about a personification of wisdom using a woman as a personification. And today we're going to be talking about the same thing. A woman used as a personification of wisdom and a comparison to a woman as a personification of folly or the opposite of wisdom. And we're going to see the differences and the similarities today when we come right back. Hi, and welcome to Bible Study with Friends, where our goal is to help you get more impact from your Bible study. I'm here with my friend, Tommy Thompson, and Tommy and I are going to continue looking at the theme in the book of Proverbs. And we've been moving very quickly where this idea of knowledge, understanding, and wisdom are mentioned together. Now, those words individually are through the whole book of Proverbs. But I'm looking at places where the three of them interact with each other in a way that makes sense for us. And today we're going to be talking specifically about wisdom and folly as two different lifestyles. And again, this is the second time, Tommy, that Solomon has personified wisdom in the personification of a woman. And this time he's going to compare a woman of wisdom and a woman of folly. And we're going to do that. So let's get into the word, okay? All right. Here we are in verse one. Now, it, this is a story uh, that w about wisdom. <laughs> and notice the pronouns are her. Wisdom has built her house. He has hewn out seven pillars. So we're talking about wisdom from this personification of a woman. Now, I want you to read from verse 1 down to verse 3. Okay. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. She has prepared her food. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has set out her maidens. She calls from the tops of the heights of the city. All right. So now we're starting to get a picture of this personification of wisdom, and she is active. First thing we see is she builds her house, and her house is hewn out of seven pillars. Now, I did a lot of research, Tommy, on what are the seven pillars. And the Jewish scholars are all over the place. Christian scholars are all over the place. Nobody knows what they are for sure. One guy said, oh, it's the seven days of the week, the seven days of creation, and the Lord resting on the seventh day. But it, I think it's a lot easier for us in understanding if we just take it that she builds her house and it's a sturdy, solid house and not try to get too metaphysical <laughs> okay and it, just basically say the, the reason it's hewn out of stone is these are not just a couple of pieces of board put up this is a solid house the solid you might say the house wisdom builds in your life is a solid house hewn out of stone not sitting on the sand remember in the new testament the house built on sand and the house built on the rock yeah. Plus, is I, the idea, I think, is she builds a house on the rock. And then it says, and she prepared her food and has mixed her wine. Now, that what that mixture wine is, culturally, they didn't serve 100 proof wine. They mixed their wine with water and they mixed their wine with spices to give it a, a different taste. And th they didn't have the luxury of importing grapes from all over the world. They used their grapes and they watered it down because it was very strong. They watered it down. In fact, the Jewish, when they celebrated Passover, they watered the wine down three to one. Three 
deals of water compared to one of wine just mm -hmm. to get it so that adults kids anybody could drink the wine and that's it's, it's basically talking about she prepares her food and makes a drink for hospitality yeah she also set her table so she's ready for guests so i could ask myself a question if do i want to be a guest of wisdom or a guest of folly because i know that's coming so yeah. that's an underlying question we can ask ourselves as we go through here so now it says uh, she set out her maidens these are serving girls she calls from the tops of the heights of the city so she goes to the most public place she can be and she shouts this this welcome okay now let's read the welcome read from verse four to verse six okay whoever is naive let him turn in here to him who lacks understanding she says come and eat of my food and drink of the wine i have mixed take your folly and live and proceed in the way of understanding Okay, now a couple things. You studied this chapter earlier. She has a message for the naive. The naive are not people without knowledge. They're people without any understanding. They don't apply what they know. Maybe they don't know anything. They don't apply it either. Okay. <laughs> so he says, but hey, you naive, you people who want to have understanding, come into my house. Come into the house of wisdom. And I've made a preparation for you to be comfortable. And I'm going to have an impact in your life. And it says very well, for verse six, forsake your folly and live and proceed in the way of understanding. That's the answer to the naive is have an understanding of what's going on. Now, be able to apply understanding gives us that wisdom. Now, what do you notice about what she says? Did you notice anything about from verse, let's say four and five? Yeah. One of the things I recognize first off is that she, she has people that she sends out. Okay. That, that have this message. With the invitation. Okay. With this invitation. Right. They have the invitation. And I recognize um, that she's calling out to whoever is welcome or whoever, whoever wants to come. Okay. And that she has plenty to offer. Now, I want you to go down, starting in verse 13, it's talking about the woman of folly, of foolish mm -hmm. living. And I want you to read 13 through 16. The woman of folly is boisterous. She is naive and knows nothing. She sits at the doorway of her house on a seat by the high places of the city calling to those who pass by, who are making their paths straight. Whoever is naive, let him turn in here. And to him who lacks understanding, she says. Okay. And now she, what she says is, is a second. But if you notice, there is a very similar feel between the woman of folly and wisdom, the woman of wisdom. She cries out. You know, hey, you naive, if you're naive, come on in here. And if you lack understanding, I'll give you some understanding. And her understanding is 17 and 18. Stolen water is sweet and the bread eaten in secret is pleasant. Now, there's a lot of, of interpretations and meanings hidden here. Some people right. would say that stolen water is this idea of extramarital sex. The yeah. wife was considered the well and you stayed in your own well for sex. And this idea of stolen water is sweet. That's this illicit sex. Bread eaten in secret is secret activities. I'm gonna take it at face value and say, it's basically talking about activities that are unsavory. This idea of stolen water. This is not water that's given to her or by her to like the mixed wine. Right. This is bread is eaten in secret, is pleasant, and then it says 
but he who does not know that the dead are there, that her guests are in the depths of death, Shale. Now, I want to also see some differences between what we read about the wise woman. If you talk about verse 13, the wise woman is on the top of the highest places and she's yelling out the message of invitation, right? Yeah. Whereas the woman of folly is just yelling to be yelling. There's yeah. no wise teaching happening. She's just loud. That's this idea of boisterous. So there's a difference. Are you communicating in your life message of wisdom or are you just talking? Yeah. Okay. Now, it also says she is naive. So this is not wisdom and inviting people to wisdom. She herself is naive and she knows nothing because she lives a world of folly. Now, it also says she sits at the door of her house. Do you notice there's no building? There's no yeah. work going on? Right. Now, this is the picture of a prostitute sitting on the door of her house, and as people go by, she offers her wares. Uh, but it's also the idea of there's no work here, whereas the wisdom was a w woman who was working and had a message in her life. So you see the comparisons? Yeah, yeah. Now, the other thing is, you say, look, they both went up to the high spots and gave this announcement. And so, to, you know, they both did the same thing. Let's look carefully at what it says. She sits at the door of her house, verse 14, and a seat by the high places of the city. Now, what do you see between that and where the woman of wisdom sits? Or it stands. I stumped you. Yeah. But the woman of wisdom goes to the high places, right? Now, yeah. does the woman of folly go to the high places? No. No. She goes by the high places. Right. Yeah. So you're going to a place in your life that's a place of knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, a place of wise living. And right there, right next to the path, is folly. She's not in the high places where wisdom is, but she's right next to them. Do you see that difference? Yeah. We got to be careful that just because we're pursuing a path of knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, that doesn't guarantee that there's not somebody right next to the path saying, hey, come off the path a little bit here. And that's folly. Yeah, that's, that was what I picked up in verse 15 is they were calling to the people passing by who were making their path straight. And right. I, I started thinking about Proverbs 4, 25 through 27, where it says, let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet then all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. Yeah, that's this idea of if you live in a straight path, be careful of the stuff on the edges. And I'll take YouTube. YouTube, I go to YouTube to watch videos all the time. But I go to specific videos that I have found in my search, and I open those videos and watch those videos. What I don't do is scroll through all kinds of offerings. Because every time I scroll through stuff or on Facebook or on anywhere, if I'm just scrolling through stuff, I'll see things that I don't want to see. And it'll have a tendency to take me off of my path, the path of righteousness. So I, I'm with you 100% there. Now you notice in verse 16, folly says, whoever is naive, let him turn in here. And to him who lacks understanding, she says, I got stuff for you now. That's the same person. If I'm a naive person, I need to go, oh, yeah, there's two women. There's two things yelling at me in life. Wisdom, who has something good for me, and folly, that has something not so good for me. And they're both yelling at me and trying to lure me off. So I need to be really aware. 
And part of understanding is being able to tell the difference between solicitation for good and solicitation for evil yeah. in my life. Not going to be a prayer. Lord, I'm trying to make my path straight here. Help me discern, as it says in 1 John, test the spirits to see if they're of God or not. We got to be really aware, not walk into things naively. Okay. And that's what he's trying to help us here. And then this idea of stolen water is sweet. And he has this very alluring message for the illicit. That compared to the message of wisdom at the front, she has a message for her guests of knowledge, understanding, wisdom. And we'll look at that verse. I want to show you that verse right here. From verse 7 to verse 12, there's a lot of discussion about 7 to 12 because it seems like it's disjointed from the woman of wisdom and the woman of folly. But if you consider, this is the woman of wisdom still talking. Don't set this off by itself. The reason I say that is because it says down in verse 11, by me, your days will be multiplied. Who's mm -hmm. the me? It's wisdom. Mm -hmm. It's this woman of wisdom who's talking. So if you look down at verse 9, 10, and 11, re read those three verses, getting this perspective of what does the woman of wisdom and wisdom in your life actually produce in your life rather than this illicit stuff that the woman of folly wants to do go ahead and read those okay give instruction to a wise man and he will be still wiser teach a righteous man and he will increase his learning the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy one is understanding for by me, your days will be multiplied, and the years of life will be added to you. So if you look at that, the benefits of going after wisdom, as compared to the benefits of going after folly, if you notice that the end result of going after folly is death. But here, the end result is blessings and having your days be multiplied. That reminds me of the verse that talks about honoring your father and mother because it will go well with your years. You'll get long life yeah. by obeying. And then we see in verse 10, this idea of people that want to absorb this are the people increasing his learning and getting wisdom and righteousness in verse 9. And it says, because... The reverence for the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Now, if I say I, I'm looking for knowledge that will lead to understanding and wisdom in my life, what there's a lot of knowledge out there. I could study molecular science. You know, I could anything. I could have a comic book collection and study the comic book collection. But here it says knowledge of the Holy One is what you should pursue. Hmm. So I want to absorb as much information and knowledge about God in my life. And that will give me this understanding of how God works, how God is working, and how God will work in every situation. And that understanding gives me the wisdom that I can get from God. So yeah. this isn't just pursue knowledge and pursue understanding of the knowledge, any knowledge. This is specifically talking about pursuing the knowledge of God. Now, so I could ask myself the question, do I do that? Am I in my life pursuing, do I have a lifestyle of pursuing understanding information about God? And am I applying that in every situation? One time I was with a guy who was, shopping for a shirt, a dress shirt. He was the guy who led me to Christ. He was discipling me. And before we went into the store, he said, I got to get a dress shirt. Before we went into the store, he said, let's pray. And he, he prayed about buying this shirt. And I went, I said, that seems to be a silly thing to be praying about. And he says, no, 
He says, I pray that my decision of buying this shirt, that nothing about that shirt will offend people and get in the way of me being able to share the gospel with them. Hmm. That's a mindset based upon the information he had about God and understanding that applied to the situation of buying a shirt. I don't want to buy a shirt that's a stumbling block to somebody. I don't want to buy a shirt that's going to offend somebody. Why? Because I want to share the Lord with them, and I don't want my shirt getting in the way. Interesting. And that's the perspective we have, the comparison of wisdom and knowledge. Now, re react. Let's do this face-to-face -face here. Re react to what we've seen. We've seen this comparison between wisdom and folly. Now, the fact that he uses two women to personify it doesn't reflect on the sex of the women, but it's it's an interesting perspective to show the living aspects of wisdom and folly. So what did you get? What's your takeaway from chapter nine? In a lot of ways, I think about kind of something that you already said earlier about how as we're seeking wisdom, we're seeking wisdom of the Lord. You know, the Lord will make our path straight. But this folly, this uh, these things really do creep up. Even like you're talking about, purely on, you're just on the internet. Pictures pop up all, yeah. the, time all the time that real as a male or probably anybody will give you thought that really shouldn't be there. And sometimes it's really hard because they are really loud. So when I read this verse, I really have to think, Lord lead me in your instruction and in your knowledge and please give me the ability and the skills to really ignore the, the woman of folly. Yeah, and to, I pray all the time that, look, I am naive about a lot of things. And the naive, the way for me to address naivety, well, naivety, and whatever. But the way for me to address that is by going to the knowledge of, about God, applying that to understanding my life, giving me wisdom in the situations, not listening to people who want to divert me away from God. So I need to take steps. If I don't just surf the internet, I go to specific places. I put in an, a pop-up blocker. I put in an ad blocker. I take steps to keep my path straight in righteousness because I want to go to where wisdom lives. I want to go and have her help me with my knowledge of God and my understanding of how God works, understanding the Lord in my life and then giving me wisdom. And that's a takeaway we can do with that the center verse in there, verse 10. We see all three of those working together. Knowledge, understanding, wisdom. And we should be pursuing those and pursuing wisdom that is godly wisdom, not wisdom that is folly. Today, we've been talking about wisdom and folly and the idea of the benefits of living with wisdom in your life or with folly in your life, what that will cost you. And I want to make a recommendation. It's called, Are You Finding True Wisdom? It's out of the book of Ecclesiastes, and I think you'll find it interesting. And we'll see you next week. And until then, God bless you.